Hi, I'm Hannah Graneman, Assistant Professor and Director of the Arts Administration Program in the School of Art. I'd like to share with you what's been working for me in supporting our students in doing group work. So when I first came to UNCG, the students told me they really hated doing group projects, but working in groups is such an important professional skill that I thought it was really important that we teach them how to work in teams and get them closer to enjoying it. So when I asked the students exactly what they didn't like about group work, the complaints came down to three things. First, uneven distribution of work. Second, lack of accountability for the students who did less or lower quality work. And finally, communication. These problems caused the students a lot of stress and anxiety, generated a lot of resentment between students, and ultimately a lack of confidence and interest in working with other people. Well, I knew they were going to have to work with a lot of people uh, in my field and probably in your field as well. So I knew I had to do something. So I developed a way to put in place two solutions that could proactively prevent these problems, and a third way to help them address problems when they did come up. I have them create group norms and expectations. I have them create a work plan for the project. And then we do some work on building the students' skills on holding each other accountable compassionately. So the first step is that I have students do some readings on the skills of high performing teams and watch some videos that I created about active listening and running meetings. The second step is for us to have a discussion as an entire class about all these challenges. This is a type of norm setting and culture setting where I'm modeling that we can talk about these challenges. This also makes it easier when they do have their own discussions about group norms within their groups that they can refer back to the large class discussion in their smaller conversations. And this also gives me a chance to reinforce that working in a group is a professional skill that takes practice and they can get more comfortable and better at working in teams. The next step is for groups to meet together and develop their group norms. In addition to the readings and the videos and our group discussion, I give them a template for creating their norms and a list of suggested areas about which they set norms. In our class discussion, we talked about how having explicit norms and expectations reduces miscommunications, mismatched expectations, and makes it easier to talk to a student who is not doing their part or causing disharmony in the group. So after the students agree to their norms, I have them take a deep look at the instructions for their group project and break it down into steps. And then they make a plan working backwards from the due date, including assigning tasks to specific students in the, in the group, along with the due date for that task. Most students say that they have never done this before for a big group project. This step helps the project to become much less daunting, helps the work get split up more fairly, and they often identify and can work through potential scheduling problems even before they arise. And then they work the plan and they adjust it as needed. Many students shared that they feel helpless when a peer doesn't do the work that they say they're going to, and they feel like they just have to take on that student's work. They're uncomfortable with calling in a classmate. So knowing that, we take time during that whole class discussion at the beginning of this process to acknowledge the difficulty of that situation and how they can use active listening, the group agreement on norms and their work plan to talk with a student who's not doing their work or not communicating and to get the group back on track rather than resentment building up and some students being burdened with more than their share of the work. I have not observed that students who leave their groups holding the bag on a project intend to try to get away with not doing their work. 
Usually there's something else going on or they're overwhelmed and they're not comfortable admitting to their classmates or to me that they're struggling. So they just ghost or put off sharing that they haven't done the work that they said they were going to do. So setting those expectations at the beginning of the group forming process about when the group members will communicate with each other if they're struggling and having that work plan with the interim deadlines heads this off at the pass because group members have already agreed on ways that they will check in with each other on how the work is progressing. The final step I do is a group debrief after the project. Now, in my class, the groups work together with the same students on multiple projects. So it's in their interest to do their share of the work and keep up good relationships with each other because they're going to be working together again. But I think a group debrief would be a valuable step for a one-time or a short-term group as well. The impact of these steps is that students report that group work is much more enjoyable, much less stressful, and that the work is, more, is spread more evenly across the group members. I'm also seeing that the quality of the assignments that they turn in is much higher with these processes, especially when they prepare that work plan. They have also gained back some of that confidence in their own ability to work with other people. They have tools that can take into other classes and their work and their life. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more about the process that I use to build these collaborative skills, just reach out. Thanks and good luck.